Hey guys, I'm back. I figured this time I'd do something a little different. I have a friend of mine that is requesting something for an airbrush, so I figured I would do something to break down basic airbrushing for beginners. So, hopefully this helps you understand and better figure out how an airbrush works for newcomers to the hobby. And the things I wish I would have learned being a newcomer to the hobby. So, let's get down to the basics, shall we? This is the basic tool you'll all be using, probably an air, a basic airbrush. This is nothing fancy. This is just your basic standard dual action airbrush. Every basic airbrush comes with this. Let me just disconnect it to make it easier for you. What you're hearing is the compressor beside me. But generally, when you work with a airbrush, you're going to have a few common things on every model you're going to have to remember. You have the tightness adjuster for your needle. You have your needle chucking nut, which determines how tight your needle is seated in here. That should be at its full at all times. You have your trigger. Some triggers attach via a pressure fit connection. Some screw in. This one's a pressure fit connection. Here's your choke. This is for adjusting air pressure on the airbrush without having to touch the tank. As you can see, it's slightly offset compared to the nozzle and the needle. This is your tip. On my model, it's removable. As you can see, there's a little tiny needle in there. This is a 0.5 millimeter needle. And of course, here is your needle collars. Just carefully, you should be able to hand unscrew it. Here's your nozzle. Your nozzle and your needle will have to be interchanged when you change needle sizes. If not, it's going to wind up not pumping paint properly, therefore not flowing properly. Always make sure your needle isn't bent. If your needle's bent, then that means that it's not going to push paint properly either. Keep this on here just for safety reasons for the most part, because these needles are very sharp. A lot of lower budget airbrushes that are still relatively good, like this brand here, Neo Eco, a brand that I have come to swear by more than most name brands, have a removable cup. What that is, is you have, of course, for the volume of paint and primer you'll be pushing through, but also certain substances. Since this is a matte black finish, you may not want to push metallics or lacquer-based paints through it. For this, you have one that's a little bit taller, has pre-measured lines on it, but still has the metal threads. Just screws in, hand screw all this. Don't overly tighten it. Get it tight though, or it's not going to leak. And there's that. And now you have all this room compared to the original cup to use. You also got a little lid. Which is nice, because then you can prevent spilling. The metal one comes with a lid too, but you're rarely going to use the lid on your metal cups. You can unscrew that. Comes in handy just for a variety of paints. Usually lacquers are what you're going to put through these. Or some metallic or some heavier paints. And here's the big boy. This is if you're doing a lot of work or you're doing a lot of models at one time. This would be exceptional if you're doing... Army painting. You could just fill this full of primer, completely full of primer, up to like here. Then you just, you know, spray it out. Would work wonderful. Now, I'm going to put this back onto the standard cup for it, just to make it easier for me for the rest of the video. So, Always check and make sure you have your O-rings here, too. Generally, what this little O-ring right here. Generally, what you're going to want to do is you're going to usually want to look and see if your airbrush has a repack kit. Most lower-budget airbrushes and most starter models of airbrushes have a repack kit included with the brush. What a repack is, is it essentially is all of the 
nuts and O-rings you have on the airbrush, like here, this little metal ring. Right here would be included. Sometimes we get extra chucking nuts. The O-ring here, the O-ring that's inside here, the O-ring that's inside here, and then the collar ring that's inside here. What I have on here is a quick connect fitting. You probably won't have this. You'll generally have what's essentially a very basic set of threads. The threads do work fine. I'd still recommend you get like a plumber's putty for it since that'll be a whole lot easier to work with and it'll seal better. You can get your plumber's putty at a local hardware store generally for pretty cheap. Ranging anywhere from about three to eight dollars a jar, depending on the quantity you get. Now, the beauty of a quick connect, if yours doesn't come with one, is right here. I don't have to unscrew this ever to change guns or anything like that. I just pop it on. I'm good to go. I'm going to give a quick rundown of things you'll definitely need though to start airbrushing and to take care of your airbrush properly what you're hearing is my compressor first things first what you'll definitely need are plinths if you're spraying anything plinths they can be like this a pill bottle pieces of wood anything and double-sided tape so what you're going to do is whatever model you're going to be working with is going to stick on here prime them or paint them call it a day next what you're going to want is a decent thinner depending on what you're going to work with whether it's water based or lacquer based you're going to want to change your thinners up depending on it if you're going to do water based i recommend the old classic vallejo airbrush thinner 71.161 by vallejo 200 milliliter bottle this is a huge bottle bottle seen better days obviously but you, know, you have your different languages here english german french spanish chinese or japanese i forget but the best thing you can use for water-based paints this works with vallejo scale 75 citadel Pretty much any water-based hobby paint that you're going to be using for miniature painting, this is the stuff to do. It'll work wonders. Same with your primer. Generally, any good water-based primer. I would recommend something like Vallejo Surface Primer. But if you don't want to, then there are some other companies that make a decent primer. But this is the best one I've found for my work. Everybody's a little different, though. You may not like the consistency. Now, for lacquers, that's where things get a little complicated. Lacquers are things like Tamiya Color or Mr. Color or Mr. Hobby paints. For that, you'll want to do the specific thing that comes with that brand. For Mr. Color luckily makes their own thinner called Mr. Leveling Thinner. For lacquer specifically, you'll need a leveling thinner because what a leveling thinner does is it acts as a well, it's pretty self-explanatory. A leveler for the paint. It helps the paint dry with no brush strokes or lap marks or anything like that. As you can see, you get a ton. An absolute ton. But, also be careful because this stuff stinks. You'll want to wear a respirator with this. Now, also AK makes a very good one called High Compatibility Thinner. This is for thinning pretty much everything. This doesn't work that great, though, with certain Mr. Hobby products. I'd say go with Mr. Leveling Thinner if you're going to do that. But for Tamiya, this stuff still works really good. And then, of course, there's Tamiya Thinner. Tamiya Thinner is great. It's good for Tamiya itself. It's wonderful. And then you want to get usually something to clean your tools with. Generally speaking, you don't want to do anything too crazy expensive or too crazy hard to work with or replace. So what I would recommend is you do this. I would recommend you get three things to make your job easier. Get a bottle of 91% isopropyl alcohol. Store brand will do. And get simple green and some water. 
what you're gonna want to do, and then you're gonna want to get a little measuring cup. And what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to fill this up to the eight ounce mark with the alcohol, the simple green, and the water. Pour them into a watertight container and then shake it. And what you'll get is an airbrush cleaner. I'll give you an example of this right now. Here is my airbrush cleaner that I make using this recipe. It's the best you can get to clean your airbrush both out between colors and when you're doing your deep clean about once a month. What I generally would do is I would focus on cleaning it between coats before I would do a deep clean. You'll want to better understand your airbrush before you tear it apart like you would any tool. The next thing I would do is if you're concerned about things getting a little bit too messy or worried about your airbrush just getting a little bit too tore up from paint gathering, I would buy Mr. Tool Cleaner R. Essentially, this is just acetone, but this is able to clean off dried paints with no problem. And it's very, very, very nice. It's good for modeling tools as well. This stuff works fantastic. If you have any tools that you're trying to keep at least somewhat okay, yeah, totally a way to go. Relatively affordable too. This will last you forever as well. Now, the next thing you'll need as a beginner that I highly recommend isn't spray stands. Spray stands are something I would recommend if you're, you know, late to the game. If you've been, you know, airbrushing for years and years and years and you just need something that's going to, you know, hold your parts. This, this is a spray out pot. A good way to do this is to put about an ounce of water at the bottom of this, like I did. What that ounce of water will do is not only will it decant the paint going into the pot, but it also will prevent any buildup or any strange chemicals from interacting. What you do is you take your airbrush. In this case, I have to take the nozzle off. And whatever liquid you have inside here, we spray it out in here. And then sometimes you can just slide your airbrush right up there if you don't have a dedicated hanger for it. This isn't a bad idea. This is a very good way to store your airbrush to keep it from laying on a flat surface because you don't want to do that. These are fantastic. I highly recommend this is the first tool you buy. This and some thinners that are appropriate for the paint you're using are all you're ever going to need. And of course, a homemade cleaner, obviously as well. And this comes in handy because you can dump this, rinse this completely out. It'll be good as new. You can just keep using it. That's the beauty of it. It's got a little filter in there that you can, of course, replace. Usually they come with about five filters. Generally, here's my little filter. Usually when you buy a clean out pot, they have this little tool here, which again is another good reason to buy one of these pots. This is a tool that's used to clean out your nozzle. I highly recommend you get one of these. That's like a little tiny ice pick. And when you take your nozzle off, this is used to clean inside the nozzle to get paint buildup in it. And then you drop it on the floor. But essentially, it's not as hard as people make it out to be. It's a much easier thing to handle. Now, when it comes to the pressure of your airbrush, there's a few things that you can do for that. Generally, I would not go over 25 pounds of pressure per square inch since what you're working with is generally a water-based paint that's going to be thinner. Even with certain lacquer-based paints, they're generally thinner paints. I would highly recommend you leave it resting anywhere between 15 to 25 PSI if you have the ability to adjust your airbrush. If you don't, then I would definitely recommend you 
maybe do something a little different by you know just leaving it on and letting the pressure build up and then spraying it out just to be safe and making sure everything's good to go the next thing i'd get are airbrush cleaning kits you can buy these at harbor freight as well one of these is made of curled wire i'm sure you can see that in different sizes that you run through your nozzle and various other parts of your airbrush to clean out caked on or gathered up paint a very useful tool to have especially considering that's one of the hardest things to clean out of your airbrush another good tool are these little brushes that again you can get usually when you buy a spray out pot they'll generally come with it a little hard to get out but again there's a variety of different size brushes that you can buy and slide them through your airbrush these clean a little better than the metal ones they're a little less abrasive as well now the next thing on the to-do list that i would recommend you both get and use as a newcomer to the hobby just because it's easier and it's going to save you so much headache is do as brands say on the back of the bottle for example if they tell you to use a specific type of thinner they're not doing it just to make more money from you they're doing it so that that way you don't destroy your project another vitally important thing you're going to want are gloves get a ton of gloves your hands will be a mess if you don't and another vitally important thing for if you're working with lacquers or certain types of paint and you really don't want to be breathing in atomized paint particles that's not particularly good for your health or your lungs get a respirator this is a can heal respirator you can get these on amazon for like 30 bucks or if you're in the states and you have a harbor freight you can get respirators at harbor freight for like 20 bucks they're going to be bigger than this and probably more industrial but if you want the little bane pig nose ability then yeah, this is the way to go. Now, aside from that, of course, you'll want to get some little tiny medicine cups to mix your paints in. Because you always, always, always want to thin your paints. No matter what you're doing, thin your paints. They're a lifesaver. If you don't thin your paints, you'll gum up your airbrush. It becomes all, it will become all kinds of problematic. It'll make it a living hell to get the thing unclogged this is far easier and if you need to make more of the color you have plenty of room to work with and then get the cheapest and easiest option you can do which is get some q-tips yeah get some q-tips the reason why you want to get q-tips they're cheap they're inexpensive and these are great for cleaning out your color cups what I mean by this is the fact that all you would have to do to clean out your airbrush is just dip a little bit of this in some thinner or some airbrush cleaner and then just rub it into your color cup. Get everything off the sides here. Get everything off the sides here. Get everything off the tip. And then just toss this and you'll be fine. That is the best way I've found to clean anything. Next thing I'd recommend for both of your cleaning your airbrush by soaking parts or anything else is, of course, isopropyl rubbing alcohol and a pair of thick gauge nitrile gloves. These are good when you're cleaning your tools and cleaning your parts because they're thicker than the disposable gloves you have, but they're also good for not letting you get your hands covered in thinner or various other chemicals. You may want to opt for these in general because these are washable and reusable. Just depends on how much you want to spend on disposable products aside from that you'll definitely want to have somewhere you can put your tools and store your tools at because again you'll probably be doing this at a desk i would recommend in front of an open window since again you don't want atomized paint in your lungs or in your room because this stuff will spray everywhere that's just how that works that's the disadvantage of an airbrush 
But generally what I would recommend is you do it in front of an open window. And I would recommend you have all your tools and your chemicals and your cleaners directly beside it. Here are all my tools and my cleaners and my thinners right here within my spray booth and beside my spray booth. This is my airbrush cleaner. This is my rubbing alcohol. This is my Mr. Leveling thinner. My tool cleaner's here. My little spray stands are here. <coughs> I've got a variety of little different size Q-tips here. My spray out pots over there. Got a couple of brushes for some thinner there. Got my primer here. I got my elastomer putty that I use for masking. Yeah, in general, this is what you want to have it all within an arm's reach. And then my airbrush is right here on a rack hanging. Again, don't worry about the rack if you're a newcomer. If you get a spray out pot, it'll have a rack for you. This is just if you have the desk space for it. The best idea to always do generally is to keep things within an arm's reach. And the reason why you want to keep things within an arm's reach is simple. That way you're not having to run back and forth or move your chair back and forth between coats or when you're trying to clean things out. This makes everything so much easier on both a cleaning level and a spraying level. Saves so much time. Another important rule is to have extra hoses. These are two extra hoses I've had for years. But I don't get rid of them because I may actually need them at some point. The reason you want to keep the hoses that come with either a new compressor or some new models of airbrush are in case the hose you have isn't compatible. Or like that yellow braided one there has sprung a leak and you're only keeping it for the collars in case you need them. Always be prepared to have to do things in kind of a weird way. And finally, there's the spray booth. This is something you should get when you have an intermediate level of spray knowledge and you use your airbrush constantly. Now, these are not cheap. These are very expensive. Someone thankfully bought this for me as a gift. That was very nice. But generally, yes, they're very pricey. And as you can see, I have mine vented out of a window because I kind of have to have it vented out of a window because it's in a enclosed space. The reason you want to keep these things vented out of a window is very simple. You're spraying paint. And since I spray a lot of lacquer products, because I do a lot of plomo and various other modeling jobs that require lacquer-based paints, that makes it easier for both my health and safety and the health and safety of my animals and the other people in the house. But hopefully this was informative enough. If you have any questions or anything I didn't cover or anything you think I could cover more in depth, let me know. Hopefully this helps the person that needed this video. You'll get it sent directly to you, obviously. So thank you, and hopefully you like it. Let me know. See you guys in the next one.